Now at five, law officers in Kansas City investigate a shooting at the Chiefs' victory rally. Plus, the Southeast Kansas Humane Society advocates for lawmakers to change the wording on an animal care bill. And the fight on Capitol Hill over the southern border escalates after House Republicans impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. I'm Natalie Brandt with details of what happens next. The four states most watched news starts now. What was supposed to be a celebration of the Chiefs Super Bowl victory turned into tragedy. Gunshots rang out during the victory rally at Union Station, scattering fans and leading to panic. Police say one person has died. About 15 other people are injured, including children. Two people have been arrested. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Dow Quick. We spoke to a Kansas City resident who was inside the Union Station and shared her experience. Giovanna Klepper was in Las Vegas just this weekend watching the Chiefs and celebrating the Super Bowl. Today was supposed to be another day of celebrations for her, her husband, who works for the Chiefs, and all the fans in Kansas City. Klepper told KOAM's Fernandez Silva she lived moments of a horror movie. Can you tell me a little bit about how you were feeling in that moment? I, I thought we were going to die, everyone, to be honest. Like, I knew like we need to find a way to get out there. But the, the feeling side of me was like, oh, my gosh, everyone was so happy. Like 10 seconds ago, everyone was partying. And then like, you know, like it, it, it's terrifying. It's, it, it's terrible. We're going to have much more on the shooting and what Klepper saw and heard tonight at 6. Now, we do have a reporter in Kansas City covering the parade and celebrations. Tonight at 6, we're going to have details on that and hear from fans and the team about their victory. Kansas Humane Societies are advocating to update the wording in the Kansas Pet Animal Act. House Bill 2542 is proposing a change in the wording of the Kansas Pet Animal Act which was enacted 35 years ago. The act regulates the care of licensed pet animal agencies. Now, currently, the act requires facilities to have adequate care for companion animals. Kansas animal advocates are trying to add the word continuous to the act. So that's a big word change, right? So a good example of how that word change would affect shelters, rescues, and breeders um, for wintertime, right? So if you put out a pail of water and it freezes in 30 minutes, that dog does not have access to water. The bill hasn't yet passed the House and it would still need to get Senate approval. The Independent Living Center in Joplin put on a Valentine's Day celebration for their patients. They got to socialize, enjoy some food. They were also encouraged to participate in square dancing, as you saw. Staff members of Independent Living say this is the perfect atmosphere for patients to engage with one another and enjoy the holiday. Well, putting a smile on their face, it just really warms the heart and it helps us to strive to do uh, better so that we can help them live independently in their homes. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard for them to get out sometimes and we really want them to get out and do things just like everybody else can. Independent Living will celebrate its 30th anniversary of service in the Joplin area this year. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty for a first look at the weather. Well, of course, uh, weather-wise, it turned out to be a great day for us today. Temperatures are fantastic. Highs all the way into the mid to upper 60s across the region. You can see for us right now, we're still sitting into the mid 60s. A southerly wind. Uh, the winds, they're going to stay kind of breezy as we go through the overnight hours for us tonight. But right now, we're getting those south winds 15 to 20 to 25 with some gusts, which have been higher than that, at least over the past couple hours. And that's what we will continue to see. Gust out there right now, going in that 20 to 25 to 30 mile per hour range through the evening we slide back through the 50s into the 40s later on tonight we do have clear skies but we have a weak wave just to our north this is going to give us some clouds maybe a sprinkler or two later on tonight another system behind it which will start to affect us on friday so we're going to break these down for you here in just a bit see you soon house republicans say they're working on a plan to address border security after rejecting a bipartisan senate bill but in the meantime, they voted to make DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas the first cabinet member in 150 years to be impeached. It was over his handling of the border. 
Natalie Brand has more now from Capitol Hill. The congressional fight over the southern border has intensified after House Republicans impeached Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas by a margin of one vote. It was necessary to deal with a rogue DHS secretary whose lawless actions have caused and perpetuated one of the worst, the worst border crisis in American history. The articles head to the Democratic-controlled Senate later this month. Majority Leader Schumer's office says senators will be sworn in as jurors the next day. What are Republicans focused on? Stupid stuff, like baseless impeachments with no evidence. The impeachment comes as the House Speaker is hinting he may not bring up the Senate's newly passed bipartisan foreign aid package for a vote. The Republican-led House will not be jammed or forced into passing a foreign aid bill that was opposed by most Republican senators and does nothing to secure our own border. But border security provisions had to be removed from the package last week because a majority of GOP lawmakers, including the Speaker, said they did not go far enough. The White House tweeted a valentine to Speaker Johnson saying roses are red, violets are blue, the border deal was crushed because of you. I've been re requesting a meeting with the president for weeks now, a month. I've been asking to sit down with the president to talk about the border and talk about national security. And that meeting has not been granted. CBS News has confirmed that without additional funding, ICE is considering releasing thousands of migrants from custody. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The Biden administration has requested billions of dollars to fund immigration and customs enforcement operations. Still ahead, possible changes in CDC guidelines for isolating people with COVID. Plus, what a new survey finds about who is and who isn't getting the HPV vaccine. Topping today's Health Watch, the CDC is reportedly considering a big change in isolation guidelines for people with COVID, similar to guidance for the flu and other respiratory diseases. Reporter Michael George has more. The Washington Post reports the CDC will propose removing the five-day isolation advice for those who test positive. Instead, people would be able to leave their homes if they've been fever-free without the aid of medication for 24 hours. I think this is really an effort on the part of the CDC to align their guidance with what people are willing and able to do. The five-day rule was really a compromise between the science and some of the other social and economic and political interests. And we as doctors, as scientists, as public health experts, we know that piece very well. But it becomes really murky when you're asking those kinds of experts to also weigh the trade-offs with social and economic and political interests. Dr. Celine Gounder is a CBS News medical contributor and editor-at-large for public health at KFF. She says at-home tests remain a good tool. The way to use these tests, though, to figure out are you still infectious is as you, you know, your fever goes away, you're feeling better, then take the test. If you're still positive, you are still infectious. Dr. Laura Germanis is a member of the health watchdog group, The People CDC. Frankly, there's been no change in the science. Most people continue to be shedding virus for about nine days with a range of six to 11 days. And the more doses of vaccine that you have, younger patients will tend to be infectious for maybe one day less than that. Older patients um, or people with severe disease can shed the virus for a longer time. The CDC has not confirmed isolation guidelines are changing and says we will continue to make decisions based on the best evidence and science to keep communities healthy and safe. Michael George, CBS News. The HPV vaccine has been recommended for both girls and boys since 2011, but a new CDC survey shows only 38% of children ages 9 to 17 have received at least one dose. White and black children are more likely to be vaccinated than Asian and Hispanic children. The human papillomavirus is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the U.S. and causes almost all cervical cancers. And that is a look at today's health news. A little bit later, our Pet Vet On Call. Hi, I'm Dr. Eva Dudek from Parsons Pet Hospital. Coming up, we're going to talk about potential OCD in your dog. Plus, we're tracking a couple storm systems heading in our direction. We're going to look at that coming up next.
Well, it turned out to be a nice weather day for us today. Temperatures right back up into the mid to upper 60s for highs well above where we should be for this time of the year. In fact, if we look at the month so far, you can see above average temperatures minus last Saturday, Sunday, and then also on Monday when we had highs into the 40s back near 60 yesterday and up to 67 for us today. We are going to start to cool back down a bit as we go toward the weekend. So we'll keep our eyes on that. All right, nice shot. This is Indigo Sky Casino and Resort. Of course, Indigo is just outside of Seneca, Missouri. We have pretty much clear skies up top. It looks good. Temperature is great. We're sitting at 66 in Chanute, 67 in Bonita, Miami at 68. Neosho 64, Carthage also checking in at 64 degrees. Let's go outside, 7th and range line. We have south winds at 22, gust up to 30. So it's been windy throughout the afternoon. It's going to stay windy as we go through the evening hours. We slide back through the 50s. You can see those southerly winds, 15 to 25, of course, gusts have been higher than that. They stay pretty high tonight. We're still going to have those gusts in that 20 to 30 mile per hour range. We do get a northeasterly wind tomorrow, so the winds back down. And then on Friday, they kind of pick up again, especially late in the day with gusts again, kind of in that 20 to 30 mile per hour range. So a little bit breezy as we go through the next few days. All right, clear skies, not a whole bunch going on here. We have a wave to our north. This wave is going to slide right across central Missouri. Uh, we're going to get a few of these clouds later on tonight. May get a sprinkler or two. That should be about it. Next wave out across the western half of the country. This wave will start to affect us on a Friday. You can see the upper level wave right off the coast of Oregon. But all the Arctic air is still staying up into Canada. And anytime we get these waves, we're not getting much in the way of cold weather. So we're getting mainly rain minus what we have Monday morning. But as we go toward the weekend, we do get a little surge of cooler air working in, dropping back lower 20s by the time we head into Saturday. It just doesn't look like it's going to stick around for very long. All right, let's go through time tonight. We slide back mid 40s. Notice the wind switch out of the north. Weak cold front slides through. Again, could get a random sprinkle later on tonight. Sunny again tomorrow, a little bit cooler. High temps kind of 56, 57, 58 degrees, but still a fantastic day. Tomorrow night, clouds increase, may get a random shower in here late. So late tomorrow night into Friday morning, a band of snow will work across eastern Kansas through Kansas City and kind of clip us as we head into Friday morning. Temperature is going to be dropping from the 40s into the 30s, but most likely Friday morning, we're going to get some light snow showers. Then most of this will be out of here by the time we head into Friday evening. So if there were any accumulations on Friday, the better shot's going to be central Missouri, but still we could pick up some very minor accumulations, especially in west central parts of Missouri. 43 in the morning, 50 by noon, high temp 57 for us tomorrow. Let's go 44 and dropping on Friday. A little bit cooler for the weekend. High of only 42 Saturday, but back to 55 on Sunday. But even those coolest temps don't really seem too bad. For yeah, it's not bad at all. Thanks, Doug. Coming up, why thousands of rideshare drivers went on strike this Valentine's Day. Topping today's Consumer Watch, thousands of Uber and Lyft drivers today went on strike in cities all across our country. Organizers said it would be their largest nationwide protest action against the ride hailing platforms with drivers demanding higher wages and better safety features. Strikers say they're being forced to work longer hours to support their families and blame the apps for taking a larger cut from each fare. The fares that you're charging riders, it's not uh, reciprocating to the drivers. Um, and, you know, we're the ones out here footing the bill for the fuel that's going up again. It's for all the maintenance on our vehicles. Right now, if you were to go from the airport to the Hyatt Hotel, um, downtown, you're going to get paid anywhere from nine to eleven dollars. That used to be a fourteen to seventeen dollar ride. Lyft says it guarantees drivers at least seventy percent of their fares each week, and that they earn an average of nearly thirty-one dollars per hour. Uber says its drivers make about thirty-three an hour. More people are falling out of love with dating apps and looking for ways to make a connection. Bradley Blackburn has more on how speed dating is making a comeback. 
On a Monday night in Manhattan, the back room at Pando Park was packed with people, all looking for a connection. We'll meet someone to date. Like many here, Jonathan Cummings is tired of dating apps and sees value in being face to face instead of swiping on a screen. You can look at their body language, you can see they smile at my silly joke, you know, and that means a lot. The only phone in sight. Here we go with round two was a six-minute timer from host Stacy Harris with speed dating company My Cheeky Date. Everybody gets to meet everybody. I say you can talk to anyone for six minutes. This company hosts speed dating here in New York and in cities across the country and around the world. There are plenty of people looking for love offline. According to Eventbrite, attendance at in-person singles and dating events grew more than 40 percent last year. The number of events was up more than 60 percent compared to before the pandemic. Dating fatigue is a real thing. Maria Abgatidas is a professional matchmaker and Eventbrite's dating expert. She's found Gen Z is even more skeptical about meeting on apps. Are you using an AI generated photo online to get the swipes or is this photo slightly blurry, clearly a person, clearly real, no filters? Gen Z is showing us that they've grown up in a digital world they're seeking more analog dating interactions. At speed dating, a spark can happen fast, sometimes not in the way you'd imagine. Jawan Kim is still looking for Mr. Right, but has found some new friends. The first two times, I met a lot of cool girlfriends. Um, nothing romantic has blossomed, but maybe third time's a charm. A silver lining in the search for love. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Now, according to Eventbrite, unique in 2023, the cities with the highest percentage of dating and singles events included New York, L.A., and Houston. Our Pet Vet On Call, up next. Up next on the CBS Evening News, we're going to have the very latest on that shooting at the Kansas City Victory Rally at Union Station. Then on KOIM News at 6, we're going to hear more from a witness of the shooting at that rally. Plus, coverage of the Chiefs Parade to celebrate their Super Bowl win. And more on the SEK Humane Society's push to change the wording of the Kansas House Bill. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then KOIM News at 6. Our pets' habits can sometimes seem maybe a little bit baffling. Today's question for our pet vet on call, why does my dog like to always have something in her mouth? Not to chew, but just to hold. Well, I'm sure there's many reasons, but two come to my mind immediately. Number one is an obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, it, 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 she just she just likes it and if it doesn't interfere with her quality of life I think it's just a cute quirk you don't have to worry about it the other thing could be that there may be some pain or discomfort in her teeth or her jaw arthritis and the pressure of something in the mouth makes her feel better so I would see that your veterinarian rule that out and if everything is okay and they don't find any problems you just have a kid with OCD Hey, we invite questions from anyone. If you have a question, you just send it to PetVet at KOIMTV.com. Dr. Eva Dudek from the Parsons Pet Hospital answers a different question or brings us a fun fact every Wednesday right here on KOIM News at 5. You can also find answers to previous questions on our website. All right, let's check out our picks of the litter for the week. A couple of dogs from the Joplin Humane Society. We have Pinto, a two to three year old male Great Pyrenees mix, a beautiful animal. The shelter says he has a medium energy level, loves sitting by his person. And from the Southeast Kansas Humane Society, something a bit smaller, we've chosen Gabe, a five year old Chihuahua who loves being brushed, but doesn't do well with cats. No cats, says Gabe, that's good to know. If you're looking for a pet, why not check out your local Humane Society? A lot of humans share Gabe's opinion of cats. That's true. I share that <laughs> opinion you? of Gabe. You don't bark at them, I'm though, not, I hope. No, I'm not a big cat person. All right. The weather looking pretty nice. Yeah, it does. A little bit cooler tomorrow, but still a great day. 57, and it is going to be windy. 44 on Friday. A few rain and snow showers during the morning hours, and then cooling down a bit as we head into the weekend. Thanks for joining us. The CBS Evening News is next, again, with much more on that shooting in Kansas City. And, of course, we'll be right back here at 6 
See you then. Let's make it a great evening.